Grab a basket of unlimited breadsticks and get ready for an impromptu dance number. Baby, but look at where I am. Dead up. <laughs> it's the Resident Evil fans have been begging for for years. One punch. Right in the tip. Now I consider myself a pretty big Resident Evil fan, I played most of the games, loved RE Village, for reasons. So when a new TV show was announced, I was like, let me in, let me in. So whether you've seen the show or not, like it or not, we're gonna have fun breaking down this season, its connection to the Resident Evil universe, and theories for season two. Welcome to London 2036, or as I like to call it, London under Boris Johnson. This is our protagonist, Jade Wesker, and if that last name sounds familiar to you, that's because she's the daughter of big RE villain, Albert Wesker. But as we'll find out later, this Albert is hiding a big secret. It's been 14 years since the quote-unquote end of the world, World, which happened in 2022, and the show will go back and forth between these two time periods. We'll see old Jade in Europe in the year 2036 and 14-year-old Jade in South Africa in the year 2022, moving into this wholesome town run by Umbrella called New Raccoon City. Jade and her twin sister Billy are the new kids in town, having moved here because of their father Albert's job. Now you may be asking yourself, Jade and Billy sure don't look like twins. Well, it's complicated. They're their father used a surrogate to combine his sperm with eggs from two different women. So even though they came out of the same woman, they biologically have two different moms. And if you think that's confusing, just wait until later. The main arc of the 2022 storyline revolves around the girls adjusting to life in New Raccoon City while getting behind the mystery of what their father does for Umbrella. The 2036 story revolves around Jade trying to get back to her husband and daughter after a botched research experiment. You see, the world in 20. 36 is held loosely together by a group of independent freeholds. We get a brief glimpse of this in episode 1, with the major ones being Umbrella, Amazonia, Fortress Scandinavia, Sahai, and The Faith. Of the billions of humans on Earth in 2022, only 300 million remain in 2036. Jade believes that the T-virus, the virus responsible for turning people into zombies, will naturally weaken over time, and that weakness will manifest in the zombies becoming smarter. I'm not exactly sure how that works out, but let's just go with it. So she goes out every day investigating different zombie hordes, looking for any signs that they may be working as a pack. Jade has found herself as a part of a faction known as the University, a team of academics who travel the world on a boat collecting artifacts from the past. The hope is, is that their work can be used as the foundation for starting civilization over again. Jade also has a partner, Arjun, and daughter, B. Arjun is not B's biological father, and we never find out who that dad really is, likely a plot point saved for season two. Now you might be asking yourself, where's Billy? We'll get into that in a bit. On her journey, Jade finds herself mixed up with a faction known as the Brotherhood. These crazies believe the zombies are a blessing and that they were sent from God for man to control. It's in their stronghold, an underground German bunker from World War II, that Jade witnesses something astounding. The Brotherhood has been able to control the zombies who power a turbine, thus making electricity. Even crazier is how they get the zombies to do this in the first place. They feed a unique zombie build in the captioning as Mother Zero. Mother Zero then communicates via pheromones instructing the zombies to move. We'll later learn that these zombies have terrible eyesight and hearing, the result of their organs slowly decaying over time, so they primarily rely on smell to find their prey. Jade's escape from the Brotherhood sees her chainsawing off Mother Zero's head so she can later experiment on it. Turns out, Mother Zero uses specific pheromones, or scents, to communicate with others. If Jade could harness this power, she could theoretically instruct zombies to kill an enemy or stay away from an ally. It could be groundbreaking for humanity. But first, teenage drama. Can we be cool? to say it, but we're sandwiched all right. Jade and Billy discover that their dad has a secret lab in their basement, a lab which not only has information about their origins, but also the Raccoon City cover-up of 1998. They watch a video of their father investigating a woman named Lisa Trevor, who some of you may remember from the original Resident Evil game. When confronted with this, Albert says the person in the video, who sounds a lot like him, wasn't him. That's because it wasn't. To make this show even more insane, Albert is one of three clone copies of the original Albert Wesker, who we meet at the beginning of Episode 7, wearing his iconic leather outfit and shades. These clones are creatively named Albert, Bert, and Albie. The original Albert, who will 
we'll call Alpha Wesker, is obsessed with self-preservation. In fact, that's a line that's brought up all throughout the season. And you Weskers, you're all about one thing, self-preservation. We're Weskers. Self-preservation is what we do. He was so obsessed with prolonging his life that he created three clones of himself to aid him in his research in developing some sort of immortality. Here's the kicker. Alpha Wesker didn't have time to raise these clones from birth to adult age. He needed them working as soon as possible, so he sped up their development speed, having these clones go from birth to age 20 in only six months. As you can imagine, this caused a myriad of health problems, and yes, I just wanted to use the word myriad. This is why Albert, Jade and Billy's father extracts their blood and injects it into himself. He genetically engineered them so that their blood could help him live. Of course, he kept this a secret from his daughters and their right to question whether he actually loved them or was just keeping them around for his own survival. When it's found out by Umbrella that Alpha Wesker was conducting these experiments in a facility buried in the Arclay Mountains, a location those familiar with Resident Evil will recognize, he decides to destroy the evidence, killing Albie in the process. I'm not sure how this was destroying evidence since the body is still there. Regardless, both both Albert and Bert survive. Albert will later go on to become a rising star in Umbrella and starts a family with Jade and Billy, while Bert would be locked away. Poor Bert. Alpha Wesker, on the other hand, will go on to die in a volcano in 2009, which can be seen in Resident Evil 5. Albert has been helping Evelyn Marcus, the newly minted CEO of Umbrella, perfect a mind-altering drug known as Joy, something that can eliminate depression, OCD, and anxiety from its users, a drug that could change the world world, eliminating negative thoughts and putting an end to suicide. Evelyn wants to restructure Umbrella from this bioweapons company towards more family-friendly consumer products, hence the production of Joy. They even have merch and a mascot. It's implied that she took over as CEO from her father, Dr. James Marcus, one of the founding members of Umbrella. We never really found out what happened to him in this series version. In the games, he died in 1988. However, Eve hides a secret. She has a mystery mutant man in a tank. She'll later tell Bert that this is her, quote, special project. Is this special project her father? It kind of looks similar to the mimicry Marcus monster found in Resident Evil Zero, which took the form of James Marcus. It could also be William Birkin, one of the lead scientists behind the T-Virus who injected himself with the virus after being shot, hoping it would keep him alive. This boss also has this claw-like hand. William Birkin is also mentioned in Episode 5 when Jade and Billy uncover confidential files with his name on all over it. So I want to hear from you guys who you think this person could be. Evelyn also shows that Joy has the ability to control others. She shows how this rabid dog can be easily soothed. So there's obviously some nefarious things going on with it, not to mention that Joy is made from a small dose of the T-Virus. The final episode sees Jade breaking into Umbrella to save her sister. She was captured after it was discovered she was bitten by a T-virus infected dog. The strange thing, however, is that Billy has not turned into one of the zombies. Something about the makeup of her blood has made her resistant. Even though she's resistant, she still suffers from its side effects, including frequent hallucinations and bouts of rage. She can still also infect others. She'll end up attacking Simon, Eve's son, who was helping Jade in her escape after he discovered his mom was drugging his other mom with joy so that she'd forget how shit their marriage was. Yeah, it's a little complicated. This all culminates in a climactic showdown. Will Eve enlist Albert's help in finding a cure for her son, or will she? Okay, wasn't expecting that. Yep, she kills her own son, putting the company before blood. A final escape ensues where Albert sacrifices himself by creating a huge explosion so that his daughters can escape. He proves that the Weskers can do more than just think about themselves. The Umbrella facility goes up in flames, but not before we see that tank monster emerge from the rubble. This is likely the start of the worldwide spread of the T-Virus, as we'll later see Adult Jade is the number two survivor of New Raccoon City. Number one likely being her sister. But what happened between Jade and Billy leaving New Raccoon and the events of 2036? Part of this is answered in Episode 5's cliffhanger, where it's revealed Billy is still alive and working for Umbrella, under Eve no less. But even that is a lie, after we find out Billy actually controls Eve using a series of electrodes implanted in her brain. As far as we know, Billy is pulling the strings at Umbrella, or at least is high up in the company. We don't see it in the show, but somewhere in those 14 years, Jade abandons Billy and the two develop differing opinions on how the world should be shaped. Jade wants to hold on to the 
past, well, Billy wants to erase it. For Billy, the past is nothing but pain. Their storyline culminates in Jade being captured. She wants all the artifacts and research the university has collected to be destroyed, but Jade uses her newly acquired zombie pheromones to attract hundreds of zombies who I guess were just chilling nearby. The university also has a defense mechanism of its own, a giant T-virus infected crocodile who they pull from the back of their ship. Yeah, that's a thing. Throughout the series, we've seen how the T-virus affects cell growth in different animals, like the caterpillar here and spider here. Jade has found a way to implant electrodes into its brain, allowing her to wake up and put to sleep this monster at her will. So not only do we have an army of zombies attacking, but this giant ass crocodile as well. In the commotion, Jade is able to escape, but the odd thing here is that she's not attacked or chased by any of the zombies. Later, when her daughter B lands on the island looking for her mom, she too is not eaten by the giant crocodile. The exact opposite, actually. Billy will notice this strange occurrence before blasting the crocodile to kingdom come, and she wonders if Jade somehow altered her daughter's DNA. However, I think there's a more logical explanation. In episode 7, Jade tells her daughter to escape with Arjun and take the green duffel bag. I think this duffel bag must be covered in the red pheromone which repels anything infected with the T-virus. This would also explain how none of the zombies attacked her when she escaped as she would have been covered in this. Billy ends up surviving the zombie attack using her umbrella drones and ultimately confronts her sister and niece. She tells her that the T-virus stripped away all her fears and anxiety and let her be her true self this sadistic killer, a killer she said was created by Jade's actions. She goes so far as to call Jade the real virus. Everyone around her dies after all, and she lists a bunch of names, two of which are characters we haven't yet met. The first is Kim, the other Hiroki. These are probably characters that we'll meet in later seasons. Billy shoots Jade and kidnaps her daughter, leaving Jade to die alone. Maybe Billy can use Bee's blood to fix her tainted blood. Not exactly sure why she didn't just kill her here, seems a little sus. We can take this as her being around if there's a season two. But the biggest tie-in to Resident Evil happens when Jade opens the note her dad gave her before he died. It's of someone they're supposed to get in contact with, and that someone is Ada Wong. Longtime Resident Evil fans will recognize her from the games. She's this mysterious spy-type character who undoubtedly has a lot of information about Umbrella's past. I get the feeling we haven't even begun to scratch the surface on what really happened between Jade and Billy leaving New Raccoon City and their falling out. I wouldn't be surprised if Season 2 continues the same format of hopping back and forth between these two timelines. Whether you liked it or hated it, Resident Evil has set up a lot for its next season, from the mystery mutant, the sisters falling out, and how Evelyn goes from the head of Umbrella to Billy's mind-controlled puppet. But what did you think of the season? I want to hear your thoughts and theories below. I hope you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and for more bad takes, you can always follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember, finished.